Ms. Lewis, you are devastated that after being daddy's little girl, you are now forced to drag your father to court to prove that you are his biological daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Palmer, you appear in court believing there is no way you are Ms. Lewis's father and claim you've always known you are not her dad. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Lewis, how did you first hear from Mr. Palmer that he wasn't your biological father? By him. Explain. He... How did that happen? Um, we were at his place of business, going about our day one day. And How old were you? I believe I was about 13. Okay. Take me back to that day. I know it's difficult. Um, he brought all of us together and said he wanted to tell us something, and he wanted me to know that I wasn't his daughter. And he said that in front of other siblings? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. How were you processing this at 13 years old? I didn't. He took me around to talk with my grandmother. She basically was sort of like saying that he, he was a little unsure, but she felt like I was his daughter. So your grandmother tried to reassure you? Yes. The man you believe to be your biological father just basically came out and said one day, I'm not your father. Yes, Your Honor. You're about 13 years old. And up until this point, you were daddy's little girl. Yes. We started going to visit him every summer. Up until the one summer when uh, I was told that he wasn't my dad. We had about maybe two or three summers before he said it. That you um, would spend together? Yes. And, and do things daddies and daughters do and hanging out with your dad? Mm -hmm. And you had no idea? No. Mr. Palmer, do you remember this day that she says you gathered everybody up? Yes, Your Honor. Why would you gather everybody up and tell her she's not your biological daughter? Because I knew all the time she wasn't my daughter and I just thought it was just time to tell her. When you say you knew all the time... Yes, ma'am. So you were just raising her... Why? To be kind? I had another daughter by her mother, and so I, I wouldn't do anything for my other daughter that I wouldn't do for her. Mm. I was a stand-up kind of a father. So what was the nature of your relationship with her mother? Well, we was inseparable at first. We was gonna get married, but all my friends were saying I'm a fool, that I'm, for, for me to think that Margaret Ann was my daughter that she was going with another guy. She had another friend. He, she told me that she was... She wanted to go see her mother, which was in... Supposedly uh, had been in a coma and on, uh, dying, and she wanted to go see her. Mr. Palmer wouldn't take her, so she had her other friend take her. But she said at that time, she was already pregnant with me. She was... I think she was, like, four months. I drove by there one day, and I saw her out there he had a 59 Ford, pink and white. I never will forget that. I was in love with her. What happened with the Ford, the car? What, what you said you were... That was a boyfriend's car. That was the boyfriend's car? It was in the drive. Was she yeah. in the car when you saw her? Yes, ma'am. What yeah. did you see? She laid down, her leg was sticking out the side of the car. Oh. <laughs> she said that, that, that wasn't true. So your mother has denied that to you? Yes. My mother said she'd never... It was never nobody else. Him only. I'm, I'm starting to understand. Well, you're saying, Mr. Palmer, you saw her with this old friend, and it was a man. Yes, ma'am. But what Ms. Lewis is saying is her mother admitted to that, that I did ask this man to take me because I wanted to go see my mother because she was dying, but I was already pregnant with Ms. Lewis, with Margaret, before that happened. But what you thought in that moment was she was sleeping with this other gentleman as well. Yes, Your Honor. And I can see how deeply this hurts you. Yeah. Because I, as I told him, when he told me that he wasn't my dad, I said, well, if I'm not your daughter, why, why, why would you continue to raise me as yours? Because my mom didn't ask you to. She didn't ask you for any, anything. We reached out. Me and my sister reached out to him. Well, that's what I'm curious about as well. So at this point where you have this bomb dropped on you at 13 years old and you're told that he's not your biological father, where does it go from there? When he told me, I didn't come back. I didn't come back for about four years, three or four years. I think when I came back, I was, what, 17 when I came I back? Said, yeah, okay. So for three or four summers, you just wouldn't go back? No, ma'am. To the farm, because you remember him saying, you're not my child. Mm-hmm. And even though your grandmother tried to reassure you in your heart, what did you feel? You felt rejected? Yes. But yes, did I... you still feel like he was your biological father? Yes, I did. I look just like him. I'm, I'm... To me, I'm his twin. 
those ears, that nose, that chin. My grandmother told me there's no other way. When she seen him, she seen my mother. And not to, even when I stayed away, my, my grandmother, she would call and she called me a couple of times and spoke with me and told me to, to come back. Mr. Palmer, all these years when Ms. Lewis didn't show up year after year after year, how did you feel about that? It didn't bother me because I knew all the time she wasn't my daughter. All right, that was honest. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. This hurts Miss Lewis very much, as you can see. Your denial of her. You seem very matter-of-fact about it. Why are you so sure? If you were with her mother, and you admit that, you were very much in love with this woman. I was in service woman. at the time, Your Honor. You were in the service at the time? There's no way I could have... To me, I couldn't... I couldn't get the timing together. So you're talking... Oh, the timing. So you're talking about the window of time that Ms. Lewis would have been conceived. Yes, ma'am. You don't feel it adds up? That's right, Your Honor. Did you bring any proof of that? Over here, Your Honor, right here. I'd like to see it. From the time I left for war in May 1968. Let me follow along with you. So this is your timeline. You say you left to go to war. In May of 68. M May of 68. Let me first say thank you for your service. Then you say you returned nine or ten months later. And then Ms. Lewis was born September 6, 1969. Yes. Yeah, I was drafted to Vietnam in May of 68. And she was born... So what you're saying is, is the way that adds up that Ms. Lewis would have had to have been conceived in November of 1968, and that was when you were away. Yes, ma'am. All right, so thank you so much, sir. You can step back to the podium. So, Ms. Lewis, is September 6, 1969 your birthday? Yes, Your Honor. It is, in fact, your birthday. Yes, Your Honor. And so when Mr. Palmer outlines this chain of events, he, his, his conclusion is that you would have had to been conceived sometime in November of 1968. Mm -hmm. He says he was away at war. What did you hear concerning these events? I heard that he was home. He was having a relationship with someone else. Kind of sort of the reason why my mom was told that, she, that he wasn't my father. Oh, you were told that he had gotten into a relationship with someone else, mm -hmm. and that was another reason why the denial of you began. It's yes, because he had moved on yes, to another relationship. Yes, sir. Do you remember this, Mr. Palmer? Yes, Your Honor. You did. The plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> so after the Ford incident, when you felt like Ms. Lewis's mother had cheated on you, the relationship ended and you moved on with someone else. Yes, Your Honor. But you still maintain that you were away at war when Ms. Lewis was conceived. Well, I calculated it up. I was away. All right. I'd like to hear from your witness, please, Ms. Lewis. Will you stand? Yes, ma'am. Please step over to the podium, sir. State your name for the court. Jesse Williams. Mr. Williams, how are you related to Ms. Lewis? Her brother. You are her brother? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Do you believe Mr. Palmer is... Ms. Lewis's biological father. Yes, ma'am, I do. I was there. I was there when he told her that he was not her father, but I believe that... Oh, you were, you were there on that day at the farm? Yes, ma'am, I was. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Palmer is your father. Yes, He's Your, your Honor. biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Palmer, you do not dispute that you are Mr. Williams' biological father. No, I don't, Your Honor. You don't? He's saying that he was not there, but I feel like he was because I have another si sibling that was born around the same time she was born. You do? Yes, Your Honor. How far apart are this sibling and Ms. Lewis in terms of birth? We're eight days apart. I was born okay. September the 6th, 1969. My brother was born September 14th, 1969. So if he was here to conceive him, he was here to conceive, conceive her. Me. In my court folder, I do, in fact, have a birth certificate for another sibling, born the 14th day of September, 1969. Yes, Your Honor. Which would just be 
eight days after your birth. Yes, Your Honor. And it says the father is Mr. and Mrs. Jesse Palmer. That was his wife, Your Honor. Mr. Palmer? Yes, Your Honor. I've got a birth certificate in the court record here for another child of yours born to you and your wife born September 14th, 1969, just eight days after when Ms. Lewis was born. That's right, Your Honor. So if you were there to conceive this child, why wouldn't you be there to conceive that child? I probably got home on a leave or something like that. Uh, I left on leave. <laughs> I don't know exactly. I can't remember exactly how it was, but... Uh... So they're born eight days apart. If you conceive that child, and you don't dispute it, why are you disputing that you could have conceived along with her mother, Ms. Lewis? Because we didn't have no relationship at the time. Oh, you were saying that you were not in a relationship and you were not having sex or sleeping with or intimate with Ms. Lu Ms. Lewis's mom during that window of time. That's right, Your Honor. He know he's my father. I know he's my father. You've lived your entire life with him basically denying you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. What has he missed? Um, he missed out on a whole lot. He missed out on my graduations. Um, I wanted my daddy to walk me down the aisle when I got married. He didn't, you, he wasn't there for that. Um, I have five girls and one son. And that one son I had, I would have loved for my dad to be there. And he wasn't there. But I know this turnout is gonna be, I'm his child. And, and all I wanna say to him, if I may, is that once we get this, can I please not hear that no more? Yeah. Please. Because I've always looked at you as my daddy. No matter, even when you told me you wasn't my daddy. You my daddy. It's okay. It's okay. How has it affected the children? They don't have a relationship with the man you believe is their grandfather. Right. We've just became into a relationship these last four, five years because I moved home, back home. Okay. And, mm -hmm. I, and, and that, I did that because my dad was sick and I wanted, I came back and I wanted to make sure my kids knew who he was mm -hmm. and he knew who they was because we not promised tomorrow. And he's getting older and I'm getting older. So I wanted them to know who their grandfather was. Even though he says that, you know, I'm, I wasn't his child, I still wanted them to know. So, Mr. Palmer, when you hear this testimony and we've uncovered the fact that you do have another child that's born during the same window of time, one week after Ms. Lewis, does it change your belief at all? No, I know what I know. And uh, I know I wasn't having no relationship with her mother at the time. Oh, they, they so before. you're still 100% certain that you are not Ms. Lewis's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I think the only way we're going to really get the answers we need is to have the results. Jerome, I'm ready. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Lewis versus Palmer. Mm -hmm. When it comes to 46-year-old Margaret Lewis, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Palmer, you are her father. Oh. <laughs> Now, don't you say that to me no more. <laughs> we got them papers. <laughs> okay. We needed that. Yes, we did. <laughs> and, Your Honor, if I may, I, I really believe this came from and stemmed from him not knowing who his father is. And he took it out on me. Because I, I was on my daddy. Because I hadn't seen my daddy. I didn't know who my daddy was. And I believe I put so much pressure on him. It brought him to, to this place. I'm very happy that I could give you the news that you wanted and the clarity, Mr. Palmer, that you needed. 
at the end of the day, it's about so much more than that. And I mm -hmm. think that's what your daughter so eloquently stated. It's about breaking generational curses. You didn't know your father or have a relationship. And then that curse was passed down to this young lady. And it almost got passed down again to another generation, her children, because they almost didn't have a relationship with you. But for her unconditional love, even through your denial, you wouldn't have known those grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown, just two and a half months ago, it was revealed that your 18-month-old son, Colby, may not be your biological child, even though you currently have full custody. Yes, Your Honor. Today, you've dragged Ms. Stewart to court to prove that you are Colby's father because you fear if you are not, you will lose him for good. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Stewart, you admit you kept the secret from Mr. Brown but claim the truth is the truth. And the fact is, you were secretly cheating on him and you appear in court today to prove that the other man is the father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Brown, tell us, what's at stake for you today? Everything's at stake, Your Honor. My whole entire family knows him as theirs. I have two grandmas that have Alzheimer's that know him as their grandsons. My 14-year-old son knows him as his little brother. My house is a more stable home for him. It's a place where he's taken care of, and I know it's the better thing for him. So, Ms. Stewart, you're saying that you know for certain that he's not Mr. I'm Brown's biological child. I'm 100% sure he's not the father. And you understand what's at stake, though. You understand that Mr. Brown is saying he has a healthy, happy upbringing in his home. I know home. he's with me and when he's gonna be happy and healthy. I can provide that for my son because I've been working my butt off every day going without seeing my son. I see him once a week. What's that to a mom? who has raised and gave birth to that son. Mr. Brown, you have custody. I so, how did you even find this out? Well, because after she moved out, she asked me if I wanted him for a couple days while she was moving her things out. She called to tell me when she was coming, and I told her that I wasn't going to give him back at that point in time because I knew what my rights were. I knew that the living situations at my household Yeah, and I have a right to see my son. Where she was at, I mean, I've got a five-bedroom home where he's got his own playroom, he's got his own bedroom. When did she say to you, but this is not your child? Right then and there. But she waited almost five days before she brought the cops to my house. Oh. If it's not my kid, why didn't you come that day with the cops? So what happened when she brought the police to your house? You know, at, by that time, I'd already talked to one district attorney and three police officers who told me the same thing that I already knew, that by law, I did not have to give him back due to the fact I signed the paternity affidavit. I was on the birth certificate. And the cop that she brought was probably the only one on the force she could get to side with her. And he came and told me it was in my best judgment that I give the child back. And I asked him if it was in, you know, my best judgment or if by law I had to. And he said in his opinion he thought that I needed to, but there was nothing he could do about it. So therefore I asked the officer to please leave my residence because there was nothing he could do. You were trying to take my son away from me and that's what you did, exactly. Rip my son from my life, from my home. And when the results are say that you are not the father, I am leaving today with my son. That is guaranteed. you're so confident. Yeah, I am confident because he don't look like you. He don't look like anybody else in the family. He looks like the supposed father and the other supposed father's elder baby. What did you say exactly to Mr. Brown that day? I'm just upset and hurt because he took my son from me. And that is when I told him, texted him, said, okay, I said, he is not your son. I know I should have told you in the long run, but that is not your son. That, that was he, after she lived in my household for over three years and mooched off my family. No, I never mooched off your family. It's more like your family was given to me. <laughs> They're being generous. Miss Stewart, <laughs> why did you wait so long to tell him? Like, why not tell him before so he would have never had the child in the first place? Because, Your Honor... <laughs> Your Honor, I really truly believe that my son was Mr. Brown's. Because at that time, yes, I was, I went to another friend to comfort me. Because at this time, Mr. Brown and I had decided to take a break. So I went in that time and talked to a friend like I always do. Comfort and friends. And one thing led to another and my son was conceived June 13th. 
So honestly, when my son was born, my son did look like Mr. Brown and it looked like the son of his family. So that is why I have withheld because I was happy. I was in love with them. And the fact that my son was going to be raised up in a good environment and good home, thinking that I had a good man on my hands. What, what changed? What changed was when he decided to take my son from me. So you broke up and then he wanted custody. Yes. So if painting. you had stayed in the relationship, would you have ever told him that this may not be his child? No, because I honestly, because being with a good man like Mr. Brown. The same thing. Is this that you don't believe he's the father or you're just unhappy that you broke up and he took the child? No, I believe that he is not the father of my son. I'm a thousand percent sure. And I know the truth needed to come out. It should have been sooner than later, but it came out. What was your reaction, Mr. Brown? You're lying, I don't believe I, that. Or did you think, I, well, yeah, you were kind of getting missing back then. I was dumbfounded, Your Honor. I was dumbfounded. I, did, I didn't know what to think. I mean, I, I've lost a lot of sleep. I've shed a lot of tears over this whole situation. I mean, I'm the only thing that, that, that my boy's got. When you first got the news from her and she dropped this bomb on you, did you say, I want a DNA test? Did you think to get a DNA test? Yes, Your Honor. I called uh, DHS and talked to them, and they informed me that I needed to call Child Support Recovery, because that's who does the DNA test in the state that we live in. When I went down and filled out the paperwork, once they started running it, they informed me that I couldn't do the DNA test because Ms. Stewart had already filed child support on me. Wait, now, you're saying he's not the child's biological father, and you know that for certain, yes. and yet you've filed to try to get him to pay child support? How does he get an open case? I don't know, Your Honor. I'm not even quite sure. I don't understand that. But I never went and I never told them that he was a father and that I wanted child support from him because I even told DHS and the child support recovery that I did not want any money from him. And if he has custody, why is he paying support anyway? He don't. They can't get it from me. One, because she doesn't have him. And two, because I'm on disability. So, Mr. Brown, you have a witness. I'd like to hear from her. Please stand, ma'am. State your name. Sarah Teske. Ms. Teske, thank you for joining us. You are... I'm his girlfriend. This is between me and Mr. Brown. Not me, Miss Teske. Well, and Mr. Brown. Well, Miss Teske takes care of your son, you don't. Yeah, and Miss Teske ain't supposed to be around our son. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now I know what it's about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving That's forward. Miss Teske is supposed to be around yeah. Billy Andre yeah. JT. Moving forward. Yeah. Moving forward. So, Miss Teske, what, what do son. you have to add? What do you know about this situation? Well, I know that right now I am both emotionally and financially involved in this whole situation. I love this man with all my heart. I know that he loves Colby with all his heart. He takes very good care of him. He, he's the best father in the world to that little boy. And I know this is gonna devastate him completely if that's not his son. And I know the other gentleman that is supposedly the father. I've known him for a couple of years actually, and I've actually talked to him. So I do know that they have slept together because he did admit that to me. He didn't tell me around the time frame or anything like that, but he did admit it. Did the other him. guy think he was the father? No. He said he doesn't believe Miss Stewart whatsoever. So, Ms. Stewart, let me ask you again. Did you go down and file paperwork or sign anything no, requesting Your Honor. child support? No, Your Honor, because I went down myself to see if I can get this DNA started. And they said that we couldn't do nothing because he has signed the paternity affidavit. As you were going through the process, did you tell any government agency, this is the father? The father is Mr. Brown? No, Your Honor. Jerome is saying adding up. Your Honor, she, she's, she's still getting all kinds of benefits for Kobe, and she doesn't even have him. That then sheds some light on why they would be coming after Mr. Brown for child support. If you're receiving some type of state assistance, they want their money back. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Brown? Yes, Your Honor? You are here requesting a DNA test to prove that you are Colby's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. With the understanding that the result may indicate that you are not the biological father. Yes, Your Honor. 
but you are the current legal father of record because you're on the birth certificate and you have custody. Yep. So you do understand that you are basically putting yourself out there in a way that you would not have to because in the eyes of the law, you are his bi... You're, you're his legal father. Right. Yes, Your Honor. It, it doesn't matter whether or not you're his biological father. When you execute and you put your name on that birth certificate, you're saying, I'm responsible for this child. This child is mine. That's why you have custody right now. So why is it that you're continuing this pursuit and pressing this issue? Because Miss Stewart named him after my father, who's deceased. Mm -hmm. He's got my father's full name in his name. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I both thought and believed he was your son. But as our son got older, I started realizing he was not your yeah. son. Kobe's got two middle names, which was my dad's first and middle name, and then, of course, my last name. So my dad's whole name is in Kobe's name. And I honestly feel that me and Kobe both deserve a right to know. Mm. Okay. <laughs> that I understand. You just want, you want the truth. Yes, Your Honor. And you are willing to put it all on the line for the truth. I've raised that little boy for, eight, for 18 months, almost 19 months. That little well, boy's my world. That little boy's going home with me tonight. No, he's not, because he's going home with me. When it determines that he is, that you are not the father, he is going home with me today. Miss Stewart, you do understand if there is a custody order in effect, you could get into a little bit of trouble if you try to just take your son, I mean, one thing we can say is it is your son. So I want to caution you to not do anything out of emotion or just to stick it to Mr. Brown, revenge. That will put your freedom in jeopardy. Because then, what are you gonna do? He gonna go right back to Mr. Brown's. You have to handle things the right way even as hard as it may be. I see this is making you very emotional. And I know, as a mother, it must be difficult to be without your son. It is. But, Your Honor, she has the right to come see him anytime. There's open-door policy in my but house. But it's so sad that you don't let me have a one-on-one -on -one with my son. No, because You don't let me take my son for a weekend. Every mom should have every right to have their son for a weekend. And, you know, I do have every right. That boy is my world. And it's like you guys don't give a crap about how I feel or how it feels to not have my son. Uh, but yeah, I know you exactly know how you feel. You I know exactly how you feel. No, you, you don't, because yes, if you I did, do. then you would understand and yes, tell I Mr. Do. Brown that I should have every right to that boy. Because he, where, where are you living at and where's he living at right now? And you know that's what's best for him. If, if Mr. Brown is not the biological father today, does the other gentleman... Does he want to be involved in Colby's life? Your Honor, I talked to the supposed other father. He said he would, if the results came out that Mr. Brown was not the father, then he would like to step up and be there and do what he can. All right, I think it's time for the results, Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Brown versus Stewart, when it comes to 15-month-old Colby Brown, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brown, you are not the father. Oh I told you. I told you. Mr. Brown, you need to sit down. You need to take a seat. I'm so sorry. I just don't understand how someone could do that to somebody. 18 months, it's a long time. It's a long time. He's still my boy. Ms. Stewart? You said all along that you didn't believe he was Mr. Brown's biological child. No. And you know for certain 
it is this other gentleman. Yes, Your Honor. This court has, of course, provided you with the answers we're here to provide, which is the DNA testing and results. But now, this case will have to continue in your home state. The custody order that is in place is based upon his legal right acknowledgement that he's the father. He's on the birth certificate. There's no other way to cut it. This cake is baked. (laughs) So you can't just remove the child from his home. You're going to have to go through the process. And even if the court determines that he remain in his home, the court has that discretion. And let me give you a news flash. If you've ever handled anything in the court system, you know it's not going to happen overnight. Right? Right. 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 Mr. McRae, you claim the defendant led you to believe you fathered her daughter, DeMiracle, for 10 months until she abruptly changed her tune and told you that you are not the dad. You are here to prove what you've always known, that DeMiracle is your baby. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Moore, you say you are positive the plaintiff is not your daughter's biological father. Your husband, Mr. Moore, is, and you plan to prove it today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. McCray, you haven't seen your daughter in almost a year and a half? That makes you emotional just to see her, Mr. McCray? (laughs) I haven't seen her in three years. That's my world right now. That's all I've been thinking about. I can't have a good relationship with a female because that's all I think about. My focus is on her. She's so gorgeous. Yes, she is. And the more I look at her, she looks like me. I don't think so. Mr. McCray, until she was 10 months old, you were her... Father. Father. Yes, ma'am. Tell me about that. I changed her. I played with her. I fed her. And I just missed that. I want something that's my own. And she knew that. He did not change her. He never changed the no, baby No, he did not son? change her because he was like, he's not going to change no girl. He did not change her. He didn't play with Were her. Were you all in a relationship wow. when, okay. when you got pregnant? No, we had broke up when I got pregnant. Your Honor, I beg to differ. I was at every doctor's appointment except for one. The one I missed because I had to work. But we walked Your Honor, that's a hospital. lie. No. When she was pregnant, because... <laughs> That's a lie. When I got pregnant, I told him I did not want him at the hospital or nothing. I told him I don't have nothing to do with him. I was being telling him, like, I worked late on purpose so I wouldn't be home with him. I don't understand this. You, you say you were avoiding Mr. McCray. Yeah. But he says he was very present. Was he at the hospital? He only was there one doctor's appointment. That was it. I told him I did not want him at the hospital. So, Mr. McCray, what was your understanding of this relationship? She said you broke up when she got pregnant. Did you feel like you were in a committed relationship? Yes, we were together for four years. Because, oh. And we met on Facebook. We decided to hook up. First two years, it was good and everything. Then after that, it started getting bad and all that other stuff, catching, cheating, and all that other stuff. I just had to let it go, because last two years, he tried to be a father figure to me, telling me what I should and should not do. I cannot go here, I cannot go there. Her? And, like, one night I worked late, and he was like, where was you at? Hmm. I'm at work. Like, I'm with my client. So you started feeling suffocated in the relationship? Yes. Wow. All right. And so, in your mind, Mr. McCray, did you think this was a good relationship? Like she said, the first two years were amazing. I wanted to be with her for a long time, but we had our ups and downs. When Ms. Moore told you she was pregnant, what happened? Take me back to that day. When she was pregnant and she told me she was pregnant, I just looked at, I just looked in shock, like, <gasps> what? Really? Well, were you having sex? Oh, yeah, I, were, almost... you, were you using protection? Nah. Well, then why were you so shocked? Because I was told I was able to have children. You were told you were not able to have children. Yes. Your Honor, okay. um, we did not have sex that much. We really didn't. Like, <laughs> I'm being honest, the four years we've been together, we probably had sex like three, four times, that's it. Within. Oh. Yes. Okay, well, it only takes once. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, Mr. McCray, you're saying that's not true? Oh, that's not true. Because when she was pregnant, I was pregnant. She was getting big, I was getting big. He didn't gain a pound. I, <laughs> she craved weird food, I craved weird food. Like, we made steak and peanut butter one day. 
I liked it. I don't like it now. <laughs> wow, those are some cravings. So, yeah. Mr. McCray, you felt like you were in step right with Ms. Moore during this pregnancy. Yes, ma'am. I signed the birth certificate. Is that evidence you'd like to present? Yes, Jerome, let me yes, see that, please. I told him not to do it, and he did it anyways after I said I did not want him Wait a minute. This is... Let me see what this is. This is a certificate of birth. Yes, he... Child's named a miracle, Serenity, Serenity McCray. Father's name, Emmanuel Davis McCray. That's my name. Last my check. And so, you are the legal father listed on this birth certificate. Yes, you're on. At the time you signed this, do you had a you had no doubt you were the biological father? I had no doubt. So, Ms. Moore, why is his name listed as the legal father on her birth certificate if you say you knew he was not the biological because father? Because I was drugged up in the hospital, he had signed the papers. Well, wait a minute. He's at why is he even at the hospital? I told then? him not to come. He said only way he would leave if it's through a body bag or if the police officer come oh. get him. So, I don't understand what's going on here. Now, you're in a relationship. During the window of time when the miracle was conceived, you were in a relationship with we Mr... Was, no, we was broken up. When Miracle was born, we was broken Not up. Not born, conceived. Conceived, yes. You were in a relationship with Mr. M McCray. No, when she was conceived, we was broken up. The month of September when I got pregnant... We was not together. So, you told... You, you knew in your mind, you felt like you knew that Mr. McCray was not her biological father. Right. My husband is the father. This is interesting. Because Mr. McCray arrives at the hospital believing he's the biological father of a child. Yes. You sit there, you wait through the birth. Do you participate in the birth? Yes, I... Saw, no, I cut he the said it's... You cut the umbilical cord. Yes. Because I... Yeah, he cut cause... it, but he was sitting his, on his side. Well, wait a minute, Miss because... Moore. Now, hold on. Because I know... See... I, wait a minute. I've been a mother in a hospital. Now, if this is not your husband, you weren't married to him, right? And you say you didn't believe he was the biological father of this child. He said he wasn't leaving unless a body bag took him out or security. Right. Well, then why wouldn't you just call security? Because I was already drugged up. They had with epidural in me and everything, so I won't be able to remember anything because I was in so much pain. We were living together. But, but my point is, it sounds Don't like, let. to me, you allowed him to go through this process. You say your husband is this child's father. Why wasn't he at the hospital? Because it, he was what? going through some things what th the... then, and he couldn't really be there. If he w been there, Emmanuel, w Mr. McCray would not have been there. And so I Mr. was already McCray, irritated. When he irritated did with we were together? So, when, when you went into labor and went to the hospital, you all were living together? You and Mr. McCray? Yes. Mm. At what point did you even have a clue that this now husband was a potential biological father? I had no clue till I left Akron, Ohio. Because... He left Akron, Ohio because I put him out and was tired of him and... But this and... was after DeMiracle was born. She was yeah. 10 months old when I left. No, she was three months. When she went to the hospital and she went to have DeMiracle, she was living in, in, with you. No, then I was living with her. I put him and out. And you were ready for him to leave. Yes, and because he would not leave at Because at that point, you said in your mind, this is not my child's father. Right. Okay, look at this photo submitted to the court. I mean, this is this beautiful baby, and it looks like she's How doing the airplane with her daddy. And, and she threw up on me after that. <laughs> that is uh, definitely a consequence of the airplane that daddies <laughs> often learn. But it, this is a beautiful picture. Thank you. Now, Ms. Moore, at this time, when this picture was taken, and had you told Mr. McCray that the miracle was not his biological child? Yeah, I told him he still wasn't leaving. He, he said he had a bomb, but he just wanted to be with me, and I do not want to be with him. But how did he even get in? Right. My grandmother. So who took this picture? I don't know. Not me. <laughs> I didn't take it. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Like, it's just crazy how he just could hold a baby that's not his. Well, he thinks it is his because you all were in a relationship during the time when she was conceived and you all were in a relationship pretty much almost to the point she was born. Right. Now, here's another photo. I love that photo. Her cheeks are so fat. So, Ms. Moore... <sighs> How did he get with the miracle again? So, so again, somebody yeah, else let, let him, him play on this one, so she he took get that his. Too. Yeah, I did take this picture. I let him get in on this one right here, so he get his stuff, so he could leave. I ain't got nothing of mine. So you let him in the house to get his things. Yes. And but you also let him play with the baby. Yeah, cause he wanted to play, so I was like, go ahead. Like I don't, I really don't want him around her then neither, cause I already knew he wasn't a father. So, I already felt bad for doing this. What was the circumstances surrounding this picture? Do you remember Mr. McCray? How did you get in the house? 
I was living there. No, he was already out. Did you live in the home during the time after the miracle was born? Yes. You lived in the home with her? Yes. No. How old was the miracle when you got kicked out of the house? She was 10 months old. After she kicked me out, she moved the, the, the other guy in. The day of, she kicked me out. Not the very next day, and the other guy is my husband, and I knew since I was five years old. But I've never seen his face until I got kicked out. Well, I want to see his face now. Jerome, I want to hear from this husband. Okay. Can you please escort him into the courtroom? Sure. Well, sir, come on. Have you go stand next to your wife. Go ahead and move on the other side of her. Thank you for joining us today. Mr. Moore, do you believe the miracle is your daughter? Of course, Your Honor. I mean, you can just look at her. I mean, y'all, ain't nobody blind. You know, no offense. So, during the time the miracle was conceived, you were aware that she was also in a relationship with Mr. McCray. Yeah, they was living together. That's, that, that was their thing. But what... I, exactly, <laughs> my point. So, we're trying to figure out if their thing mm -hmm. produced this beautiful baby. That's what we're trying to figure out. Were you in a relationship with Ms. Moore at the same time? We had a friend. But you were having sex. So, you're saying you were really? also intimate with her during the window of she the time that... The miracle was conceived. That's a possibility. Actually, me and Jamal actually were seeing somebody else. And when we was like being friends or whatever, I was not with McCray when me and him was hooking up. So your now husband was seeing somebody else right. at well, the time. That's nasty. But it wasn't, it wasn't like that. Like he was going through his thing, I was going through my thing. So our relationships wasn't good at the time. He broke up with the other girl. Right. And then you all resumed... We start, resumed our, rela our Kindle, our relationship back. And it is your testimony that it's during that five. window of time when the miracle was conceived. Right. How old was the miracle when Mr. Moore, when your husband broke up with the other girl? Three months. So at that point... Did you bring him into her life? Like, did you say at three months old? Yes. But then Mr. McCray was still living in the house with you until she was 10 months old. Yeah, and then I put him out. Like, I kept putting him out. He kept coming back. Like, he would not leave. Look, if you think a child is your biological child, you would be saying, I'm not leaving even my child my, either. Even if my daughter was not there, he would still came. So, at that point when you got put out, did you have all your things? Nope, I had nothing. I had to come back. What stuff? Actually, uh, I came, knocked on my door, and got want. his things. That I didn't want. The TV and I, I gave want. it to her, and she stopped me herself, and she was like, yeah, that baby is your husband's. Okay. So, Mr. McCray, did your family ever come and tell you, we don't think that's your baby? Yes. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. But that did not sway your belief. Because I know for a fact. I know... I know. Everyone was telling me. People that, people that didn't know me, that people that did know me. I, mean, I don't care what y'all think, because y'all wasn't there when I was there. You don't know what I was going through. So I'm going to believe what I believe. I mean, when you cut a child's umbilical cord, when you are there, the birth of a child, and you think that child is yours, you formed a bond. Whether anybody likes it or not, right. you formed a bond. Because when the baby was born, I looked, and was like, the baby came out of that? And that's all it wrote. That's all she wrote. Under the law, with your name listed on her birth certificate, you are the legal father. Yes, I have Which means legal rights. you have legal rights to see her. You have a legal obligation to mm -hmm. provide for her financially. You b came here and brought this case today to prove you are her biological father, which really can put your entire standing in jeopardy. Because if it's determined today that you are not her biological father, you then leave room for Mr. and Ms. Moore to go to court and have you removed as legal father. Right? Yes, ma'am. But it's important to you to have it established that you are also her biological father. That's why you're here today. Yes. Mr. Moore, what would you like to add? If I write my name, okay, my biological name on a certificate, now, mind you, you said it's supposed to be a mutual agreement, right? I wake up from being on anesthesia, and then I see a whole another man's name, aside from just the fact that the last name that I want her to have of mine, on this piece of paper. Let me say this, Mr. Moore, and it's your wife, and you love her, and I'm glad y'all in a relationship. Okay. But, Ms. Moore, you're not fooling me. I don't know where you were, but I know you were in a relationship when this baby was born. I've been a woman too long. Since... 
You had not cut the cord on your relationship. She let him cut the cord on the baby. Mm-hmm. And that's really what happened here. Mm-hmm. What was going on is she wasn't sure you were gonna leave that woman. Come on. And so, sent, and oh, hold on. She wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. And until she was sure, she led him to the water and let him keep drinking. This is clear as day from this seat. Okay. And so, at this point, all we have left to get down to the bottom of this are the results. Jerome, I'm ready for the envelope. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of McCray versus Moore, Moore, pertaining to whether Mr. McCray or Mr. Moore is the father of two-year-old DeMiracle McCray. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Moore. Mm -hmm. He is the biological father. Yes, ma'am. Can you accept that? I can accept that. It hurts. I know. I gotta move on. She's still pretty to me. Of course she is. Because I was in foster care. I didn't know my father. I don't even know my dad. He walked in this room right now. And for her to be confused and not knowing who her dad is, and me being there, getting that bond with her, it it brought a smile to my face. 